Hey guys, this is Adrian from AMPNF and welcome to this new video. Today we'll be talking about one pretty important subject when it comes to astrophotography. We'll be talking about lenses. One thing is to choose your softwares and post-editing uh, process and workflow and the other thing is to choose the correct hardware, so your camera and lenses. And today we'll be focusing especially on the lenses. Now the choice of the camera and the sensor, which we'll be talking about in another video, is pretty important when you consider the noise quality of the picture and you can also control the number of pixels uh, in your, your photos. But all the rest will be determined by the lens, how bright it is, how uh, wide you can shoot at. and um, the, the, the time of exposure. So the lens will be your ultimate weapon to shooting good pictures of the night sky. For example, with a lens with a high uh, minimum f-stop, you will have difficulties, even though it's a really good lens, you will have difficulties shooting excellent pictures because you will have to higher up your ISO on your camera. So that's why it's important to choose really, really good lenses for astrophotography. And today we'll be talking especially about that. After I had a lot of questions and requests, I wanted to make up an ideal checklist of what features a good lens should have for astrophotography. On a side note, it will only comprise lenses suitable for Canon and Sony. And to help you make up your mind, we will gather in this video a lot of suitable lenses for astrophotography, ranking them according to different criteria like focal length, build quality, sharpness, aperture, or price range. We will select the three winners by focal length, but also the overall winner. I will not be making a full review on each lens, as there are plenty out there, and otherwise it would take forever, but we will quickly compare a few interesting lenses with some hands-on examples. When you're talking astrophotography and regardless of the quality or price you're willing to pay, the three main lens criteria that should come to mind when choosing are the maximum aperture, aka minimum native f-stop, the distortion, vignetting or aberration, and the third one is the sharpness. While the presence of autofocus or image stabilization is rather irrelevant for still images, as you should probably focus manually, the choice of the lens focal length depends entirely on your shooting needs. A lot of astrophotographers shoot wide angles, but remember that shooting closer deep sky objects is possible and can give pretty neat results. Just keep in mind the rule of 500 if you don't have any tracker. For reference, watch my first tutorial. Your lens needs to let in a lot of light as you're shooting at night. So you need the lowest f-stop possible. Remember that the lower the f-stop, the more light gets in. So the less ISO and shutter speed you will need, but generally pricier the lens will get. As a rule, we call bright a lens that has a minimum native f-stop of 2.8. Now, a lot of people argue on this subject. And I personally think that f2.8 as minimum f-stop is still too high. Now, a lot of progress in developing lenses with very low f-stop has been made in the recent years. So I think lenses with max aperture of 2.8 should be good for semi-dark situations like sunset, sunrise, moonlit scenes, or aurora pictures. A lot of pricey f2.8 lenses are okay sharp wide open, but keep in mind that for sharper stars and less vignetting or distortion, you will have to stop up two or three stops. So you might as well buy a lens with a super low f-stop like 1.4 or even 1.2 for very dark scenes, allowing you to stop at 2.0 or 2.5 and still take advantage of loads of light coming in while getting pinpoint sharp stars. The funniest part is you can find cheaper lenses at f2.4 that are super sharp and we'll be talking about them today. Now, as you increase the aperture, you allow light rays to go through a wider area of the bent glass of your lens, resulting in getting a lot of undesirable phenomena in the corners of your pictures. Distortion, vignetting, and chromatic aberration. You want to find a lens that has the best optic performances, so that even if you shoot wide open, you will not get these annoying consequences. 
lens manufacturers are getting better and better at producing affordable lenses with very little vignetting or distortion, enabling you to create beautiful nightscapes with taking full advantage of shooting at the lowest f-stop on your lens. Thirdly, the sharpness is determined by the quality of the glass. The purity and thickness of the glass layers will rather dramatically improve the general sharpness of your photos. That's where a lot of big companies like Canon, Sony, Zeiss or Nikon can justify the price of a lens. The more glass and the better quality glass, the more expensive it will be. Even if sharpness is important at night to get the fine details of the Milky Way and pinpoint stars, it's often compromised by the grain of the high ISO. And once again, you can find cheaper lenses on the market that have as much sharpness for half the price. As a conclusion, the three things you need to be considering when choosing an astrophoto lens is the minimum f-stop, so that should be 1.2, 1.4. Um, the vignetting, aberration and distortion of the lens which can be found on the internet on separate reviews and eventually the sharpness and the general build quality of the lens which can also be found on reviews on the internet. Some things you might want to consider as well is the price of your lens or the focal length of your lens which depends on your needs. Alright guys, so let's start with the super wide angle lenses. I did not include the fisheye lenses because I don't work too much with them even though you can get great results with them. So about the wide, the super wide angle lenses, uh, you can say they're between 10 millimeters and let's say 20, 24 millimeters. They give you a super wide angle of view so you can get a lot of the Milky Way and a lot of the night sky uh, in your frame. So the best ones for me are the Samyang Rokinon um, lenses that are ranging from 10 to 16 millimeters, f, from f2 to f2.8. There are also several other ones, but these are the ones uh, that I worked with at the start. And I should say for the price, they're really fairly cheap. Um, they're okay sharp and their f-stop is okay. It's at 2.8, between 2 and 2.8. It's okay, it's not the lowest, uh, but it's okay. The next one is a newcomer on the market. It's not been released yet and it's a Sigma lens. It's been reviewed by uh, Lonely Spec by uh, Ian Norman and it's really promising uh, for astrophotography, especially also for time-lapse. And time lapsers. Uh, it's a 14 millimeters f 1.8. It's the market uh, lowest f stop for a 14 millimeter lens that I know of. And the review on lonelyspec.com is really promising with a low distortion and uh, in the corners and pretty much sharp from corner to corner. The third choice is a Canon lens, a 16 to 35 millimeters f 2.8. Now this lens is really awesome in terms of sharpness and it's incredibly sharp. It's a bit pricey though, it's way more uh, pricey than the Samyang and Sigma lenses and it's about 1500 bucks but and it's 16 millimeters so if you want to put the price it's a really, really good lens, although um, I haven't tested it myself, but I've read and uh, seen a lot of reviews on the internet, and it's really, really sharp lens, but the problem is the f-stop is, again, 2.8, which is, to me, uh, still too high for really low light conditions. Now moving on to the wide-angle lenses that are ranging from 24 millimeters to about 35 millimeters. The clear winner of this category is the Samyang 24mm f1.4 for full-frame cameras. It costs about 500 bucks, so it's fairly cheap. It's actually uh, the cheapest lens at this uh, focal length. And it has a super low f-stop, which is 1.4. It's not 1.2, but still super low. This lens is really sharp. I was amazed by the sharpness of this lens. It's my go-to lens. I use it for pretty much everything in astrophotography. 
whether it's panoramas or single shots or time lapse, uh, it has a super low distortion, coma, and vignetting, even at uh, f1.4, so wide open. So I would strongly recommend this lens for um, any beginners. The second lens I want to talk about is the Sigma 24mm f1.4, also for full frame. Um, it's not the same lens, but it you can get the same results. Uh, pretty much has the same sharpness as the Samyang 24mm. Um, gives the same results, so it's kind of difficult to see. Maybe it has a little bit more coma, that's why I put it in second position. But still a really good lens. A bit pricier, I think it's like about... Uh, 800 bucks or 900. I put some awesome Sony lenses in third position because of their price. For example, the Sony 35mm f1.4 is an excellent astrophoto lens in terms of corner to corner sharpness, but it costs about 1600 bucks. The Sony 28mm f2 is a good and cheap lens, but is only f2 and has higher comma and vignetting. You also have the Sony Sonar 24mm f1.8, which has an excellent build quality and sharpness, but also costs $1,000. And finally, in fourth position, you have the Canon lenses, whether it's a 24mm f1.4 or a 35mm f1.4. Because of the prices, it's about $1,600. And they have lower performances, not in terms of sharpness, because it's an excellent build quality, but more in terms of comma and vignetting which is pretty much horrible at f1.4 and generally speaking wide open you would have to open up to at least three or four stops to gain uh, normal vignetting and comma now for standard prime 50 millimeter lenses uh, the overall winner is the Sigma 50mm Art f1.4, even though it's 950 bucks. Um, it's the one that I've used that has produced the best results for me in terms of sharpness and vignetting and distortion. Um, the Samyang is equally as good and is less pricey, but uh, I've noticed myself that in this particular case, the Sigma 50mm Art performs just a bit better uh, and is to me the best 50mm prime lens for astrophotography. Uh, in third position, you have the Sony 50mm at f1.8. Um, it's still f1.8, but then again is uh, not at all expensive, it's 250 bucks. And in fourth place, you have the Canon 50mm f1.8, which is about 100 bucks. That is a must-have. Uh, it's okay sharp, even though uh, I haven't had the best sharpness results with it. But it's definitely one of the go-to lens to have. Uh, it's super cheap. On the other hand, I would not recommend buying the Canon 50mm f1.4 or f1.2 like this one. These lenses are really good for portrait photography and they have a really beautiful bouquet, but they tend to get really unsharp in the corners and they have a lot of vignetting and they have a lot of comma and aberration. Now, you can use longer focal lengths than 50mm, for example, 85mm, 100mm, 150mm, but remember that the longer the focal length, the less exposure time you will have before getting star trailing, without a tracker, of course. And if you're gonna buy a lens that is above 50mm, you definitely want to look into the Samyang lenses, which offer uh, re relatively cheap lenses with a super low f-stop, for example, 85mm f1.4 for full frame, or even a new 85mm f1.2, but get this, 135mm f2 for full frame cameras. And I've read a lot of reviews about how sharp it is. Sigma, Tamron, or Tokina also offer a lot of fairly good narrow angle lenses for astrophotography that aren't too pricey. They perform really well when it comes to taking close-up shots of planets and disk sky objects without having too much comma and vignette, but their f-stop is generally high. However, if you're on the budget, 
These companies, and especially Sigma, produce sharp enough lenses for spectacular backyard astrophotography. Canon probably still produces the best long focal length lenses for astrophotography on the market when it comes to sharpness and vignette above 200mm, but they cost easily an arm and a leg because of the quality of the glass and the low f-stop. Sony finally starts producing quality long focal length lenses, but their astrophotography performances remains to be tested. As a conclusion, you should not underestimate the difference that the lenses can make on an astrophoto. They can decide whether your photo will be sharp, have vignette, have comma, and will govern pretty much how you will set up the other settings like the ISO or the shutter speed. During the video, you probably guessed what my favorite lens for astrophotography was, and it's definitely the Samyang 24mm f1.4. It's super sharp, even wide open, has negligible comma, distortion, and chromatic aberration. It costs about 500 bucks, so it's fairly cheap, and it's still 24 millimeters, which allows a wide angle field of view, and to get a big part of the Milky Way as well in the single shot. It also enables me to do panoramas, which I like, so I take several pictures and then assemble in just one. So I like the fact that it's like a hybrid um, lens and it's become my go-to lens. Um, I use it for pretty much anything and its hybrid cap capabilities help me um, make amazing time-lapse, amazing sharp uh, and bright time-lapse. So I would definitely recommend this lens for any uh, beginner and professional as well. And if you're looking for longer focal lengths, I also encourage you to look into the rest of Samyang Rokinon's lineup, uh, whether you have a full frame camera or a crop camera, because they offer the best quality lenses for your money. Um, if you want lenses that may be a tad more durable and sharp, I urge you to look into the Sigma Arts and the rest of the Sigma lineup, which also has awesome lenses. Now, what if you want lenses for astrophotography, but also at the same time for the rest uh, of the fields of photography, like daylight photography and landscape photography? Then, only then, I urge you to look into Canon, Sony, Nikon, uh, Tokina, um, Tamron, and other brands, because um, they, they, they offer good lenses and really sharp, uh, that's not the problem, it's just that um, they're not at unbeatable prices, they're pretty expensive. Alright guys, I really hope that you enjoyed watching this new tutorial and that it will help you make up your mind about astrophotography lenses. Um, once again, this tutorial is far from being comprehensive and is highly subjective. Um, but after working extensively on astro time-lapse and single-shot astrophotography, I can tell you that these lenses were at least suitable for me. And I know what's best, and I know what works less. If you enjoyed the video, please feel free to share, subscribe, like, and comment in the comments below. Um, also, if you have a question, you can also put that in the, in the comments below. And also, if you have your own experience about some of the lenses that I just named in the video, please feel free to share your experience in the comments below so that the others can benefit from your experience. So I see you next time in my next tutorial. Take care. Bye-bye.